Hey y'all, Uncle Jimmy here. When you speak for yourself, you're forced to think for yourself. And when you think for yourself, the sports world looks different. In order to enjoy this podcast and this show, you need to have the courage to look at the world from alternative points of view and not be offended when you disagree. Speak for Yourself isn't your Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram feed. SFY tells you what you need to hear and not what you want to hear. So, welcome aboard, buckle up, and enjoy the ride. Let's start with Cam Newton. Carolina quarterback Cam Newton loves posting elaborate and confusing Instagram videos and messages. 24 hours ago, Cam took to IG shirtless, sweating, elbows on the ground, planking, and proclaimed he's comfortable being uncomfortable and just wants a little commitment. He did not state who he was talking to, but we can assume it's the Panthers owner, David Tepper, and new head coach, Matt Rule. The Panthers have been a bit coy with their quarterback plans for next season. Tepper has previously stated he only wants to talk about Cam when doctors confirm Cam is healthy. The organization also hired LSU passing game coordinator Joe Brady, fueling speculation the Panthers would make an attempt to land Heisman Trophy winner Joe Burrow. That dream seems to be ending. Burrow indicated at the Combine that he would be more than happy to play for the Bengals, the team with the top pick, or any team that drafted him. And yesterday, Rule unequivocally stated, I absolutely want Cam here. There's no doubt about that. With all this new information, I have an idea for Cam's next IG post. He should dress as the rapper Notorious B.I.G. and do a remix of the song One More Chance. Mm. Panthers, give me one more chance. Mm. I got that good arm, girl. You didn't know? <laughs> <laughs> That's what happened here. The 2015 NFL MVP, despite having a friendly one-year $19 million contract, had to beg the Panthers to give him one more chance to remain their quarterback. Cam Newton backed into a corner is a dangerous quarterback. We saw that in his final season at Auburn. The whole college football world lined up to castigate Cam and his father for their alleged greed, and Cam put the Tigers on his back and won a national title. Okay, that was 10 years ago, and Cam has suffered multiple injuries since and has become a rather eccentric quarterback. Hmm. But Cam Newton had only $19 million and fighting for his life as a franchise quarterback isn't a bad scenario for a new head coach. Plus, nothing stops the Panthers from drafting Justin Herbert or Jordan Love at number seven. This could play out in Carolina the way things played in Baltimore when the Ravens dra uh, drafted Lamar Jackson, despite Joe Flacco being on the roster. Matt Rule said he wants Cam on his roster. Rule did not guarantee Cam would be the starting quarterback. To my eyes and ears, it appears the Panthers have evaluated the QBs in this draft and decided Joe Burrow isn't the only guy who can run Rule and Joe Brady's system. Cam's remix of Biggie's classic One More Chance might turn into one last chance. We like another quarterback, Cam. Mm. You didn't know? Mm. All right. Joining the desk now, mm. the Fox Sports NFL analyst, notorious L-A-V-A-R. Tupac U.S. <laughs> you didn't know. Tupac Hushmanzad. Tupac. Tupac. <laughs> All right, right Marcellus. Any bone All thug? Right. Crazy bone. <laughs> any one of the bones? <laughs> All right. Uh, I think on, the man. Panthers are committed to Cam throughout the 2020 season. You know the DJ and me ain't going to let this song go without <laughs> flipping it for Cam. Because Cam's so sick of this song. The prospect's so strong. They think they... <laughs> Handle they biz, there I is. And that's Cam Newton oh, right wow. there. <laughs> Cam Newton knows that a healthy Cam Newton, this organization knows a healthy Cam Newton. Is a major pain. Like <laughs> 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 this song. I gotta stop with this song. All right, all right. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I had, I had to do it. It, it. It's unstoppable. It's unbeatable. So this situation, look, anxiety comes for anybody who's injury prone, who has that on their record. But we can't control our injuries. We can work to try and make sure that we're in the best condition to go out there and show our abilities. That's where Cam is. I think this organization is thinking ceiling, not floor. They're not thinking Cam injured. They're thinking 2015 MVP. They're thinking 2018 six and two, um, 2017 six and two MVP candidate. They're thinking the top of Cam, not the bottom of Cam, and that's how they should think. Are they committed to Cam? I'm gonna say 100% they are through this season. And 
maybe not even through the season, through OTAs, through training camp. They just want to see how he looks. And he said it. I absolutely want to hear him. There's no doubt about it. So they're committed to him. Now, the draft, once the draft comes, Jordan Love is a sleeper of the draft. He can move around. He can throw it. Do they draft him? I doubt they draft him at seven. But committed to Cam, his message was passive aggressiveness a little bit. Mm. I just want some commitment. Show me you want me type of – being passive aggressive. If he shows them that he can play – and he's healthy, he'll be fine. Isn't it, that aggressive, aggressive? Like, what's passive about it? He's like, I want commitment. Who do you think he's talking to? His he girl? didn't say who. He, he talking to his girl? He wanted, and that's I why, want you to marry me. And that's why <laughs> he's just speaking into the camera. We know who he's talking okay, to. That's okay. why it's passive aggressiveness. And, and so All right. it's one of those, if Cam is healthy and he at 19 million, that's what that's what it is, is oh, he's making 19 million dollars. There's not a starting quarterback that we can get in free agency that's gonna, we're gonna pay him more than 19 million. We have one. Let's see what he can do for us. Okay. Um, they want to commit to him. Matt Rule wants to commit to him. But against conventional wisdom, my, my assumption would be that they cannot commit to Cam as it stands right now. Interesting piece of uh, perspective here and information. Cam and Matt Rule have a pre-existing relationship. All right, Cam being a big major figurehead for the brand Under Armour, and Matt Rule was a very big uh, – you know, coach for the brand um, when he was with Temple. So it it is interesting because you could see that they have a friendship and a dynamic that exists there. So Matt Rule, probably based off of a personal interest, wants things to work out with Cam Newton. Now there's the health side of it and there's the money side of it, right? You look at his his dead money hit, it's $2 million. Nothing. All right? So if you get rid of him, you clear up $19.1 million for your team. That's a lot of room to be able to build a team. So I'm looking at it from the way he's, he's playing it very well. If Cam gets healthy, he doesn't cost us a whole lot of money, and we can see if he can make it through OTAs. His biggest challenge is going to be making it onto the roster. But if he's not healthy, what? then this now this now becomes a trade bait type of situation because you're saying you want him, which takes his value and makes it a, a higher value to possibly be able to trade him and make that run for Joe Burrow. It, it To me, at the price that Cam's at, it makes no sense for them not to go through the offseason with him. Mm-hmm just to kick the tires. At that price, you have to kick the tires. But it also, to me, again, I kept thinking about Baltimore this morning and having Joe Flacco, a guy that won a Super Bowl for him, never an MVP like Cam, but an established quarterback. This might be the perfect time to draft someone if you see someone else in the draft. Even at number seven, it may not be Joe Burrow. They may have done their evaluation like, well, hold on. For Matt Rule and the system we ran at Baylor, Joe Brady for the system. There may be other guys in this draft, the Jordan Love, who can run that system. And you draft a guy, you let Cam play, for, and hopefully he has a good year and the kid sits and learns, and then you play him the next year perhaps or you have a decision to make during the offseason. Or Cam's trade value is, you know, who knows? What, what comes from this season. But I don't see them as fully committed to Cam. This is clearly a dating situation. Well, you can't fully commit just because of the injury concerns. So when you say fully commit, do you mean... For the 2020 oh, season? Oh, wow. Okay. I think they're committed. Yeah. Look, to, first of all, we have to respect what it takes to be a franchise quarterback, and it's not just tangibles, and it's not just intangibles. You also have to have the combination of good luck and health And you have to be able to exist and succeed in those moments. Cam has proven that. No one else on that roster, Will Greer, Kyle Allen, who are you going to draft? No one solidifies that position more than Cam. Cam can lose it, and you can have anxiety because of his injury concern. But outside of that, are you really starting to look at his performances and say, no, Cam is not good enough? Because his performances were You don't want to get off to a bad start with the owner, and the owner sitting there saying, talk to me when he's healthy. That's why I made sure when he did his his interview, he said, listen – Cam is trending up in terms of being able to get a good, clean bill of health. That's what Matt Rule said out of his mouth. So he's basing the same exact thought process off of Teffer that he's he's looking at Cam from the standpoint of almost saying, talk to me. I want him, but talk to me when he's healthy. Here, here's the issue for Cam, I believe, in this system with these two guys, and particularly Joe Brady, but Matt Rule as well. If you go look at LSU... 
Joe Burrow was pretty precise with the football. Yeah. He was very accurate with the football. His they his fundamentals. Cam's footwork is so inconsistent. He's late with the ball. Can that's why I think they have a trust issue in terms of the system they want to run. It's not just going to be some big play, throw it down the field. Can Cam be precise with the football the way their offense requires? That's where I think their trepidation and lack of commitment would come from. When Cam had North Turner, North Turner is a throw the ball down the field type of guy. So that's a lot of six and seven man protections. With Joe Brady in LSU last year, if you pay attention, it was a lot of five and six man. They're getting a lot of guys out into routes. And so all you have to do as a quarterback is understand coverage, who may be coming free, who's going to be singled up and get rid of the ball. It's different offenses. This should suit him because if you make, if you, flooding the uh, defense with six guys out in routes or five guys out in routes, and then Camp makes a guy miss, it's going to leave the field wide open for him. And that's why Joe Burrow has so much success because, oh, this guy's coming free. Either I'm going to hit my one-on-one, -on -one, and if I can make him miss, I have all this room. So this offense suits Camp. All he has to do is stay healthy. There's something to be said about the Cam Newton nostalgia as well. You know, Matt Rule and Brady are coming in probably, like I said, there's a pre-existing relationship. They may be big fans of them. And sometimes it really could mm. just it really could come down mm. to relationally speaking. They could be so they much could of a be fan. big fan. Cam ain't got a lot of big fans. Oh, right I now. oh yeah. I would I would protect him in Carolina. That. Oh yeah, in Carolina. Shoot a that. shot at Cam from outside Carolina and see how Carolina responds. I'm talking about football people. Oh well, well look, That's, football hey, people will look if at he shows 68%. him he can win, they're gonna be great fans. And if he shows them he can't, they're gonna get rid of but him. As simple as that. 68 percent in completion percentage when he was healthy last time. And that was with North Turner going into the second year when we said, okay, now McCaffrey. Yeah. And, and McCaffrey, he can be accurate. Now, will he be consistently accurate in the new system? You got to put him on the field to see. But only trepidation is really just, is he going to get right, make a prediction here. Are you convinced he holds the starting job all year this year? Absolutely. Cam Newton ain't losing his job. Nobody walking through there. No one's getting drafted or walking through there that's going to say I'm better than Cam Newton. So if he stays healthy, yes, it's his job, and he won't lose but it. But they don't have to. If. They don't have to walk through there and say they're better than Cam Newton because they've admitted that they're in rebuilding mode. So you don't have to come in and be better than what Cam Newton was. You have to come in and be who you are and fit into what's going on. My prediction, again, comes back to the money. You clear up 19.1, you can build a nice little team right now in this first year as a head coach. I think that $2 million hit, you're trying to trade them if you don't trade him, you'll, you'll see if he's healthy, you let him go. I don't see him making the, the roster this year. And, and his favor is his – Well, hold, hold, you, this is crazy. Yeah, you, yeah, big yeah, fans, you argue they're big fans, what? but you don't yeah. see him making the roster. Again, I'm looking at it from a business perspective. <laughs> You're trying to rebuild your team. That's why you brought in a new coach. You don't just get rid of a type of coach like Ron Rivera if you're not trying to rebuild. He's too quality of a coach. You're trying to rebuild this team. I don't know. That's an assumption right there. I think that you have pieces and you want to get more out of them or go in a different direction. doesn't always mean rebuild, reconstruction. Here's the thing. Well, he said it out of his mouth that's a rebuild. But being real, the team that spent the most and the team that spent the least were in the Super Bowl this year. So you can look at it any way you want. You can build around a Jimmy G. He was the most expensive quarterback back two years ago. If I can clear $19.1 million under my salary cap. And lose a franchise quarter quarterback. Go that ahead. I don't know is capable of being that franchise quarterback. If he's healthy, if he, if, if he's healthy did money. he's going to be the starting quarterback. Yeah. They, You don't want to, number one, throw a Ricky out there. And let's just say it's Jordan Love. He played at Utah State. Small school. You come into the NFL, it's a different ball game just from schematics, the speed of the game, the guys you're playing with and against. You want him to be able to sit and learn. If so, unless he gets hurt, he's sounds like what off. people said about Lamar Jackson, and he played as a rookie. He, he didn't they start as a rookie. Start, he didn't start, he didn't. They used a the, the quarterback. The second half of the year, he started. Yeah, but he I'm going to venture. Yep. I'm going to venture to say that Cam Newton's age, he can play for another five to six years at a high level if at he can least. stay healthy. So. He, I'm going to say, yes, he's going to hold the starting and position. And Flacco was toast. Season. So Flacco was toast. It's easy to make that decision. And Flacco can doesn't have repeat? athleticism that a yeah. Cam can Newton I has. Can repeat? We were having debates on this very show that if Cam Newton was able to return to the team this year, would he even be able to win his starting job? Which means that if it was worth a debate about the current quarterback that they have right now, why would you not make that Kyle your starting Allen can quarterback? Play. Allen, can when play. he was would undefeated. Would you not make that your starting <laughs> quarterback while you draft somebody else and you prepare them? Muscle pain? I'm talking stopping your tracks 
I'll never work out again. Oh my God, what am I going to do kind of pain? This is the kind of pain Dr. Jason Wurzlin was in when he created Theragun, the deep muscle massager that's unlike anything you've ever felt. Theragun isn't a cheap massager that just tickles your muscles. Our handheld percussive device uses a scientifically calibrated combination of speed, depth, and power to release the deepest muscle tension. It's this simple. Whether you want to treat your muscle tension from working out, an injury, or just everyday life, you can use Theragun. Theragun is the preferred muscle recovery device for over 250 professional sports teams and is used by hundreds of thousands of satisfied customers around the world to reduce pain, increase range of motion, and soothe aching muscles. Try Theragun risk-free for 30 days or your money back by going to theragun.com slash cadence. For a limited time, listeners to speak for yourself, get a free charging stand with the purchase, a $79 value. That's theragun.com slash cadence. T-H-E-R-A-G-U-N.com slash cadence. C A D E. N C E. LeVar Arrington and TJ Hushmanzada are back. Time now for a big story. Let's move to Tom Brady. Brady. Whose future has everybody in the NFL talking with wild speculation flying about where the GOAT will play next season. Just about every team in the league is hoping to get in on the action with Tampa Bay head coach Bruce Arian saying that Brady is at the top of his list of quarterbacks he wants to pursue in free agency. It may sound crazy, but Tampa has one thing New England doesn't a couple of really good wide receivers in Mike Evans, Mike Evans and Chris Good Godwin, Godwin, who both put up numbers that would look good to any quarterback. All right, do we think Tampa Bay has a real shot at signing Tom Brady? No, not a real shot. Um, it's attractive with the roster. It's attractive with that offense. It's attractive if you were to put Tom Brady into a system where he protects the football like Tampa – Jameis Winston doesn't, and then you take advantage of his accuracy. Uh, but I don't think it's smart. Uh, I don't think if you're going to depart from Bill Belichick that you want to go somewhere that is not a blue blood in terms of either branding or location. I think that's a part of this conversation. It's not just go somewhere and win. Huh? I love Tampa. Yeah, what's wrong with going to Tampa? <laughs> and I, I know why we love Tampa, but if we're going to go there, we all what's, know why. What's wrong with going to a team that you can help build to win? Oh, you know I love go, that. Go to a like, blue blood you know team. Me, you know me? I love <laughs> what that. What like, mean? Because he's motivated to do something that's different than just go out there and win and without story. He has to win with story to depart from Belichick. And also, he's 42. He doesn't have time to construct the roster or to help these guys get their lumps to become a championship team. So, no, it's not right. They they have a real shot, and they have the weapons on offense. Yes, they do. They have warm weather, which where he wants to play in warm weather because you believe the body. Um, that weather is tricky warm. It's warm, though, even if it's raining. It's on raining, fire it's, warm. <laughs> and he'll take that over freezing Boxing. cold. Boxing. Oh, I get, you. I get you. They have the weapons offensively. The only yeah. My only concern would be the Bruce Arian, James, Jameis Winston, they putting pressure on Jameis Winston saying, listen, if your price don't come down, this is what we're looking to do. But go. Byron Leftwich, Leftwich is offensive coordinator. But I believe that's Bruce Arians' offense. Is Bruce Arians, will he be flexible enough to say, okay, Tom, what, what do you like to do? Let's kind of mesh what you want to do with what I want to do. Bruce Arians is a guy that likes to throw the ball down the field. But offensively with the weapons, and we didn't even talk about O.J. Howard, like he can be a yeah. really good tight end. And so yeah. offensively, this is exactly what Brady looks for. Is looking for us warm weather in the division. You, you're gonna pretty much compete with the Saints, the Falcons defensively, not much. The, the Panthers, we don't new head coach, new offense. It fits him. I'm with you, TJ. And we didn't mention outside of Mike Tomlin and and Chucky out in, uh, for the Vegas Vegas Raiders. Bruce Arians is the type of guy that could bring in a guy like Antonio Brown, and they'd have a good relationship, and he can manage it. We kept saying. Tom Brady and Antonio Brown want to play together. Now you add that third receiver. You got one Can't of the, the most. Ex- Why not? Oh. You got one of the most explosive oh. offenses. You couldn't have all right three now. of them. Why I, could they I wouldn't know. get along? Of course, AB wants would. the ball. That's AB, real. That's AB real. would totally fit in the slot in that situation because you have yeah. two longer, rangier guys in Godwin and and Evans. It could totally work because that guy. I mean, everybody would personality. He's not talking that. about it's yeah, thematic. It, but, but it'll work personality-wise. For one, Antonio Brown has to make it work, for one. 
For two, those guys probably look up to Antonio Brown. And for three, the leadership of Arians and Tom Brady, it would be an explosive triplet set that Tom Brady has. Eh. It could very much work. Antonio Brown making it work is not just being on the team and helping the team win. It's getting mine, too, because that's what part of the problem was in Pittsburgh. Who does he like throwing the ball to most? Who does 12 like throwing that ball to the most? Slot. That's Julian, slot. Uh, uh, yep. That's Edelman. slot. And, and, I get it. That's A.B., slot. like, people confuse with A.B. and being small and being a slot receiver. He's not a slot receiver. And, that, and that's where the NFL, they go wrong a lot, too. Oh, you're a small guy. We're going to put you in a slot. Your game might not be suited for the slot. That's where you have smart receivers. He we all well in the We slot. all going to play the slot. Mike Evans can play the slot. I don't know if Godwin can. But if you can put Mike Evans and A.B. in the slot and okay. then one of those guys outside, they can move. You have options. Hold on, they ain't even got Brady. And y'all already gave him Brady and A.B.? What <laughs> they the hell y'all talking about? making it work. I'm Marcella, telling you You're not making it work. They want to play together. You're making it. You're making it. You make they want him tumultuous. I'm number twelve. This could be dynamite. Number this could not. Twelve. Brady could get to play with Antonio. Brady Brown could be forty-three for real next year. And, I mean, like on the field, and then Antonio could not be right mentally. And then you said, "Oh, that's what There's they a want." A whole lot of ifs that exist. Exactly. But if you're talking about where they. What if they at? do? What if what? they do? Come on, Tuesday. I still don't. Th- with the defense, hold on. Now the defense, defense isn't bad. Man, Shaq Barrett had 20 sacks. I, I, y'all not listening they to me? They got one of the. They they got look. Too. Jameis put them in bad positions with the turnovers and Brady the field position. Brady's not gonna do that. Brady's not gonna do that, but he's also. Not going to go to throw for 5,000 yards. Brady's not going to stretch the ball down the Brady, field. The same. Brady, Brady's not, not going to take the same risk. They're not going to be getting beat that bad to where you have to throw the I entire love that. fourth quarter. I love that. It's, it's a measured a crazy, experience. It's not a crazy strong division. You got Atlanta. They're still trying to figure yeah. their way out. It is. They look good perfect, the second half. It's a good opportunity if they were to land you. I, I'll say this mm. I thought y'all were crazy yeah. when this thing started. Y'all have given me a little bit of pause. Bruce Arians is a hell of a coach. Yep. Uh, he certainly, with the Godwin and Evans, and if 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 Brady is selling himself to some of these teams as like, oh, we bring an AB with me. That's the perfect place. That 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 probably works best there. Uh, but, but it could work a lot of places. I I, <laughs> I tend to agree with Marcellus though. Hey, How do you on, go man. from the Patriots? Yeah. To the ta- and I know Tampa's won a Super Bowl, but how do you go from the Patriots to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers? Go to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and win a Super Bowl as Tom Brady. Do you do you remove the monkey that everybody says that the gorilla that's on your back? Do that, you remove? First it? of all, mm, there no. is no gorilla on his back. No. There's that's no what shame. Say. I know, I get it, and those people are crazy. Winning Super Bowls with Belichick, there's no asterisk next to that. Okay. He's just as much part of the Patriots dynasty as Belichick. He has nothing to prove. But if he does want and, – and look, man, Bruce Arians would treat him in a, with a, in a oh. way of oh. affirmation and all that. <sighs> Y'all flip me. I thought there was zero chance. I'll go to 20% chance. Tampa. I mean, is, and it really is going to boil down to, let's just be honest, who's going to offer him the right contract? The teams that he's dealing with, that he's going to deal with, they're all going to have weapons. Tennessee, they have weapons. The Raiders, they will need weapons. The Chargers, they have weapons. Teams that are going to go after him, they have the weapons. So now it's going to come fit the division you're in, the guys around me. But what you going to pay me? Yeah, but this defense gave up the 29th most points. They were putting yeah. bad they situations. Were putting bad. Ain't nobody putting that many damn bad situations. James Look, I know, I, I'm considering what <laughs> James, you're saying and I like still James saying you shouldn't be 29. I like Jameis Winston. He was playing baseball 30 for 30. <laughs> he was in the 30-30 club. I and I didn't that. think he was going to But y'all not understand where Tom Brady's coming from. We're a team that was, what, number one? And, and, yeah. And then you're going to go to 29 and say, oh, because Jameis is gone, where are we going to land when Jameis is not here? That's not number one. Two, you look at... Man, that defense, hey, you, that, uh, you think he's hey, going to swap out number one hey, defense for 29? You guys are defensive players. Yeah. If you take 15 yeah. to 18 less snaps a game, you guys wouldn't be better? Yeah. Oh, okay. okay. That, I yeah. Might yeah. Be, the last 15, I might that's the easy on, sacks. The yeah, last 15. I'm about to say the last. No, but your defense <laughs> wouldn't be better whole, if they played less snaps. Yes. The discussion yes. has been around Tom Brady not having respect for his paycheck and talent. If he could go get both of those two things mm. in Tampa and bring in his boy that he had in his crib, exactly. smiling selfies, why are you? Why are we condemning this? I, I'm not a thousand it. percent convinced it. he 
wants to play with AB. I think that's just a homie love. Yeah, 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 yeah. So no, now, we got to no, <laughs> throw rhetorical tarts out there. <laughs> uh, all right, that's, that's fine. It's, a, it's more interesting than I give, yeah. give it credit, but no, nah, hell. It's not, I don't, I don't it would be exciting if it happened. Whitlock and Wiley, joined now by Fox NBA analyst Rick Buecher and Yahoo Sports senior NBA insider Chris Haynes. All right, let's move to the NBA where LeBron had a huge night against mm. Zion Williamson and the Pelicans last night. Showing the rookie, he still got it, dropping 40 points and a win and celebrating with some red vines at the end of the game. Mm -hmm. LeBron has had a fantastic season, but he's still trailing Giannis Antetokounmpo in the MVP race. But both guys are putting up big numbers with Giannis edging LeBron in points, rebounds, and shooting percentage, while LeBron leads the NBA in assists and is shooting better from three. All right, we've asked this before, but we'll ask it again. Think LeBron can catch Giannis in the MVP race? I still don't think he can. Um, I don't think he's as motivated as Giannis um, to get the MVP. I think he's going to die on the shield, on the sword of a, a title, but not as an MVP. Um, his minutes are down from last year, which was career low in minutes. So he's doing his own version of load management. And on defense, he's better this year, but still picks his time. Uh, dribble slower than the average point guard, bringing it up to kind of conserve himself. And it's a shared experience with AD. Uh, LeBron, at times, is not the best player on his team, even though he's LeBron, the greatest player we have right now. So, no, I don't think he's I fully disagree motivated. with that. Yeah, I do too. You do? Oh, y'all think he's the best player on his team? He's better than AD? Yeah. Oh, okay. Every night. Well, I watch a lot of games. <laughs> Every night? Every night. Every night? Even on his off nights. I think, I Even think on his off nights. Now, this year. I, I think the, the Lakers had no AD last year, mm -hmm. and they had LeBron, and they were in no way in this position that they are now. I think AD is not get. That's my point. It's a shared experience. So you're going to say, oh, I think it's AD. No, I think it's LeBron. That's the problem. That's why you won't envy I'll go you one better. He's a better player than Giannis Antetokounmpo. Who, who's this? AD? Le Le yeah. No, LeBron, LeBron James. Oh LeBron God. James. Oh, my God. The, the, <sighs> no. All the things that LeBron does, and this is why I do believe that he has a chance of, of winning MVP. Now, the Lakers are going to have to make this a race for the best record. I, I've done this long enough that I know how the voters look at things. And they, when it gets this close, they start to look at numbers. Mm. And how do the respective teams do? It may not have anything to do with it, but the reality is that becomes a factor. Then they go down the list of where their statistics are. Everything's close, but I got to take a look at LeBron James leading the league in assists and how that makes the rest of that team better and what we thought of that team at the beginning of the year. Mm. So if the Lakers can make this a race for the best record, then certainly LeBron has a chance. He's, he's on the outside looking in, but I cannot close the door on the possibility of him winning it. I, I agree, I, and I think we have to – not dismiss how important the last impression is. When I'm talking about down the stretch, what happened? I remember 2017, the year Russell Westbrook won MVP. For most of the year, I was telling people I was going to vote for James Harden. I even told some of the Rockets officials I was voting for James Harden. Then Russell went with Westbrook the last two weeks, just went on a tear, you know, triple doubles, but he was hitting game winners. The last impression, I gave my vote to Russ. Of course, some, some Rockets officials, they were mad at me, right, rightfully so. What I mean by that is, like, Milwaukee, they've been in cruise control all season long. They don't get a lot of buzz, you know? And so the Lakers, they're going to be on everybody's radar all the time, even the media. So if LeBron and the Lakers string away some big wins down the stretch, I don't even think necessarily even catch Milwaukee for the best record in the right, NBA. Right. But make if they can yeah, make it close. Last impression, I think he has a shot. I I'm not sure if LeBron has to do any more than what he's done so far this season. If he just finishes this out and they're within three games, four games of Milwaukee in terms of record, because, again, at, at some point, somebody's going to say, look, man, the West is harder. It's a better yeah. division. He's been playing tougher competition. And then the other thing, the reason why I think he can catch him and why I agree with Rick, he's a better player, everything I see LeBron do, even last night, I go, you know what? He can do that in the postseason as well. <laughs> when he, his impact will be immense in the postseason against every opponent. When I watch Giannis, I just go, well, we'll, we'll wait to see the postseason and see what that really looks like. And I'm just that experience. And that, that's why last night was important. He was effective against Toronto last night, led him to a victory. But the stench of the Toronto series from last year is still in my mind. I think it'll be in voters' minds. 
You can trust what you see from LeBron. It shows up in June, May, every, you know, it'll show up in October if they played in October. With Giannis, I'm not so sure. Well, uh, Giannis is working on that fadeaway. Giannis is working on that turnaround, mm-hmm. and it's working mm-hmm. because Milwaukee found out, oh, Giannis, oh, a little less. 1919 went out there and beat Toronto in Toronto. Here's the thing. Eight, uh, just slightly, let's talk about AD, what he brings to this team, and the blocks which leads to defense, which is why the Lakers really are better this year because defensively they're so long and it's just the rim protection. Anthony Davis is leading that charge, who is also the leading candidate probably for defensive player of the year, along with Giannis, depends on how you want to play it. So we, we always lean offensive and we talk about LeBron being the best player. Mm-hmm. We never think about why this team is really better this year. Mm-hmm. And it's not because of just offensive production and LeBron leads the league in assists. I respect that. Here's the thing. Giannis has better numbers this year than he did when he won the MVP last year. And his team is better this year. And y'all trying to say he ain't going to win the MVP this year? I want to hear the logic. Anybody? Oh, we, we didn't say he's going to win. Oh, okay. We, didn't say, no, we just said a, a I'm going to tell you why. It's all because of the Toronto series in the postseason. To me, mm. what happened to him in that series tainted his MVP. That's prejudice right there. Well, it, that's not a part of the but, voting but consideration. It, it, you're that's, right. That's prejudice you're right. right there. But the reality is mm. all those things factor in. Yep. You can say it shouldn't be. You can say you need to look at it through a prism. But the reality is voters look at it and they don't want the embarrassment of going back to Dirk Nowitzki winning winning I, I MVP that. and then getting yeah. knocked out in the first round where everybody everybody looks at it and says, well, we got this wrong. They want to they, they know that they're voting for the guy. It may be a regular season award. But the guy who's going to have a chance of being the other thing, the, end of the, the day. other thing, Marcel, with us all being journalists or whatever, we love narrative and story. <laughs> and LeBron's story is better than Giannis's story. The, it, it's this year, or are you talking about in, in totality? This year and damn near every but, year. But so, right, I so, give you totality. Okay, but this year. Okay, really? all right, even a guy who get over the hump and, and his success let, leads to championship success. Listen, what he Giannis. says. This year. Are, do, do most people talk about Milwaukee? No. Are, the that, narrative, that's, that's part. What year do they ever talk about Milwaukee? But, we going no, 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 no. But especially now because the feeling is that, look, empty we've calories. seen this before. Yeah, we saw calories. this last year. I and they it. basically got swept out by Toronto in that, in that series. And, so I, I, so you vote for LeBron and then guess what? They get swept out by the Clippers. No, like, the the, but the narrative, the, again, to go back to the narrative, we've never seen what LeBron is doing. At his age, in this deep, no one. I'm just saying. Here we this, go with this with, Drew Brees with, with MVP this legacy well, award. When oh, and, how and did again, that end? And again, when <laughs> you go back go. to there, I'm just here telling you. Here we go. P- the Kobe Bryant tragedy plays into this. Where's LeBron, it? the Lakers are, and I came into this season just like you, thinking the Clippers were going to be the story in the NBA. Mm-hmm. LeBron and the Lakers have overshadowed all of that. That this season has been about the Lakers. Yes. When people think about this season, it's the Lakers. Kobe, hand the MVP to LeBron. He's in year 17. He's put up incredible. Look, man, I was very skeptical. Didn't think. I'm the guy that says the Hollywood James experiment's not going to work. I'm hoping the Clippers bail me out on that, but it don't look promising. They, LeBron and the Lakers, have it going on, and it wouldn't shock me. If, if the voters, again, it was no different. Steve Nash got MVPs off of narrative mm. over Shaquille O'Neal when mm. Shaquille was clearly better. Yeah. LeBron's got a hell mm. of a narrative. Don't now. make me nerd out up here because we count all the counting numbers, the easy ones, rebounds, and assists, and, and points. Doesn't matter where LeBron still there. loses to AAD in two of those three categories. But then let's get deeper. PER, win okay. shares. Who do you think is having more impact on the Lakers? <laughs> oh, it gets quiet again. Uh-huh. It's not even the LeBron James. Yeah. So, uh, look... I, the shared experience, I think you guys are really minimizing. That's going to, outside of L.A. borders, they're going to think, oh, AD's there too, which robs LeBron a little bit. And then Giannis is oh, oh, just, I'm, I just want to ask you, I'm not trying to okay. uh, uh, nitpick. Let's go. But are you thinking in the minds of the voters? No, of course not. You know me. And so, again, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. You I'm gotta, not talking about last year when I'm voting this year. But I'm thinking I'm in the minds of voters, yeah. and I just think... I know. I agree with you. You can go and look. And they have all those stats and numbers, but I just don't think people are going to be sitting there going, well, he shared it with AD, and AD's a big part of the deal, and maybe AD was better than him 35 or 40 of the games. 
blah, blah, blah. They're going to sit there and go, damn, LeBron James is dominating the league. At that age. At and that and age. I'm old when I'm voting. So yeah. <laughs> the voters yeah. are old and they're going to well, get Well, let, let me, let me I, I have a confession to make. So let me, let me say, I am thinking about the narrative of how I think other voters are Are you a voter? Vote. I am a voter. Oh, let's But I, I'm going to say this, just to make it clear. I do think so far Giannis is the MVP. And I think it's his to lose. But I, w- I would say, I was just a little personal note. Uh, Giannis is um, Giannis' girlfriend, Mariah Riddlesperger. That's my cousin. Both from Fresno. So, you know, they just had a child. So, that's my little cousin right there. Mm. So, I want to make this clear, Giannis. I'm not saying LeBron should get the MVP. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just so saying. Attached. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying that it it's a long season. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm it saying. It is too long. Go ahead. Too I'm far like, away to be thinking about like, Christmas. I'm, 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 like, present you I'm glad here. I made that clear. That's Chris all. Chris Haynes taking That's care of personal it. business <laughs> right here. Let me just That's stop it. Everybody. That's all I wanted. What That's just all. happened here? That podcast man, interview. Come on, man. That podcast, right. Come on, cuz. gone. With home security, there's two ways you can go about protecting your home. There's the traditional way where you wait weeks for a technician to do a messy installation that costs a small fortune, or there's the other way, Simply Safe. Simply Safe is everything you need in a home security system. It's award-winning protection, two-time winner of CNET Editor's Choice Award. Simply Safe blankets your whole home in safety. You get comprehensive protection for your entire home. Outdoor cameras and doorbells alert you to anyone approaching your home. Entry, motion, and glass break sensors guard inside. You barely notice it's there. But what's truly remarkable is you can set up this system all by yourself. Anyone can do it. It takes 30 minutes to an hour tops, and there's absolutely no trade-offs to your safety. You'll have an army of highly trained security experts ready to dispatch police to your home at a moment's notice 24-7. And it's only 50 cents a day with no contracts. It's why The Verge calls Simply Safe the best home security system. Go to simplysafe.com slash speak today and you'll get a free shipping and a 60-day risk-free trial. You've got nothing to lose. Go now and be sure to go to simplysafe.com slash speak. That's simplysafe, S-I-M-P-L-I-S-A-F-E dot com slash speak. We're joined now by former Pro Bowl fullback, Marcel Reese. Time now for Darnell's question of the day. All right, take it away, homeboy. Yes, sir. Let's move to the NFL Combine. We're touchdown to us, shaking things up, talking a lot about his love for the Cowboys, <laughs> yeah. saying that Dallas was his family team growing up, that he even has dogs named Star in Dallas. Now, last week, Tua said playing in Dallas would be his ideal situation, and he would even be cool with sitting behind Dak for his rookie year. <laughs> I wanted to ask you guys, do you think Dak should feel disrespected by all the two was cowboy talk? Uh, slightly, yeah. <laughs> just slightly. <laughs> what do you mean? Just slightly. Itty bitty. Really? Because uh, trust me on this, what? he wouldn't be talking, man, the Chiefs are my favorite team. I wouldn't mind sitting behind Patrick uh, Mahomes year. for a year. When you're talking about, he wouldn't be saying it about Deshaun Watson, mm. Lamar Jackson. Mm. That dude, to me, mm. is saying a little bit. <laughs> Y'all know Dak. Mm. Yeah. Ain't Tua. Mm. <laughs> Keep talking, man. Keep talking. I'm editing what? my notes right now. Cause <laughs> he wouldn't be saying that some other places. But look, when you talk about generational fandom, which he's talking about, Tua's granddad was a Cowboy fan. His dad's a Cowboy fan. He's a Cowboy fan. My father's a Cowboy fan. I get that. Um, will he articulate it with the same level with his chest like he is right now? He's may you see an opening, but I, if I'm Dak Prescott, I am not upset that a prospect is a Cowboy fan. Oh, yeah, nice me. I'm the starting quarterback of the Cowboys if I'm Dak. I don't care if your dogs are named Dallas and Star and all that. Like, that, that's, like, <laughs> fun. That's a great story. People Magazine can run with that. But on this football field, this is my team, and I'm the franchise. All right, player. let me ask. Darnell, let me bring you into this. Yeah. Uh-oh. I want you to say right now, I wouldn't, I've wouldn't. i sat behind Marcellus for a year. <laughs> I think that's long Hey, you better chill right now. <laughs> <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Wow. Wow. <laughs> this is my favorite show. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'll be mad. He ain't saying anybody else show. I told this show. <laughs> Jason, listen, I'm going to yeah. tell you. If I'm Dak, no. Yeah. I don't see it as disrespect. For one, I look at it as a challenge. What I did this past season speaks for itself. Really? I don't even have to say anything. Mm. Oh, you went eight and eight, speaks for yourself? My <laughs> numbers. <laughs> well, listen, as a team, he wasn't the issue. Mm. He wasn't the biggest issue as a team. Same, same. Now, if you're, if you're Dak Prescott, you're saying, listen, look at my numbers. I'm not worried about Tua. 
you still have to prove yourself. Can you even play yet? Are Woo! you healthy? Woo! Now listen, I think Tua, on the other hand, is playing the game the right way. He, no one's seen him run or do anything since he's been hurt. He's doing the right thing and saying, listen, I'm up for the challenge for anybody. And it's a humble brag to me. Mm, like that, that, I, I can that. come get that if I wanted it. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he said. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. okay. Now, hold on, you married. Oh, but again, <laughs> when you used to be out on the street, somebody, you with your girl, somebody say, I can come get that <laughs> if, I <laughs> <want> <laughs> if I want <laughs> to. If I want to. All right, well, your That's homeboy kind of stuff. Hey, Marcel, uh, <laughs> I'm going to let you have it. I'm going to let, let you have that situation <laughs> for a year. <laughs> but I'm just letting you know. I'm going to come have it. I'm going to come have it. That's a humble brag coming that from That is tool. not a humble I'm, brag. Humble you brag you leveling up. That's a level up. And that's what the two is doing. And it is humble. It's a humble family. And look, the Dallas Cowboys, is that's a dream job for anybody, no matter what position, yeah. offense, mm -hmm. defense, whatever. It's, it's a dream job because it's one of those fandom teams. It's just they got a great fan base. And I don't want to go one day as a, as a former team in that division that hear my, my, <laughs> you're what? You're Dallas Cowboys? I hear it every day. Everybody is fans of this team. That's so really. I, don't, I don't see the fandom part of it. I, I love the fact that Tua is a fan and he doesn't have a problem proclaiming his fandom for his team. But if we're getting back to the nuts and bolts of what he said and the hit and message, especially after he unseated the guy at halftime, in the national championship <laughs> game. This, this is what I do. This is what I do. You know, in Game of Thrones, they called him the king killer, yeah, the king slayer. <laughs> this is the quarterback slayer. And he's telling you, I got my knife ready for you. It's disrespectful. I don't it's want no. Total disrespect. Y'all got to respect that we're culturally cynical. Like, we're here in the mainland. We, we look at things differently. I'm trying to give him the pass of, I'm not even <laughs> We're thinking. in the mainland. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, he's, where he's from, <laughs> Tell it what I it think is. he's coming from a more pure spirit. And it's not just a competitive spirit. It's like, oh, I, I'm absolutely. a fan of that. Oh, no, no, no. I think you're a thousand percent right. Yeah. His family's very religious. That culture the, the, uh, from outside the mainland is mm. different. He's coming from a very good place. The question is, <laughs> Dak Prescott. Man. We're not talking about two and where he's coming from. Yeah. We're talking about how's Dak interpreting it. And I don't think Dak is sitting there going, oh, well, you know, he's from that Pacific Island coast or whatever. He didn't he, mean he, anything by he a year. He didn't mean anything by <laughs> he, he, he didn't mean anything. No, Dak is sitting there just like every other quarterback going, damn, he wouldn't say that about Mahomes. Mm. He wouldn't say that about Lamar. Why he over here in my situation? <laughs> I'm out here starving, looking for a contract. Oh, I need a contract. <laughs> and this, and a, a prospect in the draft is saying, man, I'd I'll sit behind him. I'll give him a year. Franchising for a year, and then I'll take that <laughs> I'll spot. Give him and a to, year. Me, to me, to me, it's it's and Tua's come, he meant no ill intent. No. But Tua just kept it real, where I think. A lot of people just don't. Y'all keep looking at these 5,000 passing yards and think Dak had this great But what season. if what if Patrick Mahomes were the quarterback of the Dallas Cowboys and he's still a fan of the Cowboys? I don't you think, don't he think he would say that. that? No. He wouldn't say nothing about I'm going to sit out for, for a year more. That's the real conversation. <laughs> no. He, he ain't saying sit out for a year. He ain't out for He'll say I'm a fan, but he ain't going to say I'm sitting out for a year. True. Come on. But wait, we can, that. I mean, uh, he put a time frame on it, Marcel. <laughs> <laughs> Franchise. You, you and I we, both know. But, but we can't have it both ways. We can't say he wasn't thinking about it as a as a disrespectful comment Ooh. to Dak, and then also say, uh. "Well, he's from a different part. He's not from the main island, so he wasn't thinking about it like that." I get what you're saying. Like, we, we, why would he qualify it and not say the right. year part? If he were coming that, with that the means no matter who was the starting he, quarterback, he yeah, would have yeah. made the same he, exact comment. We can't that. have it both he ways. He spoke very. Clearly, <laughs> I love Dallas, would love to play as my ideal team. I don't have a problem sitting behind Dak for, for a year. year. <laughs> what, what, they, what else are we trying to context decipher Context matters. Here? Franchise tag is a year. They may have been po posing the Marcellus. question in another perspective. How was the Marcellus. question presented I ain't got to Tua? To yeah. <laughs> okay. Listen, I think our question here is just, is, does Dak feel disrespected? Yes. yes. And if I'm Dak, I don't feel disrespected. Yes, like, you does. can't see me. Mm, I, that's Say how whatever I would you feel. want. This is America's team. Everyone is a fan of the Dallas Cowboys. Yes. Dallas is star. I was a fan of that someone else. That man is coming from Dak America's team in college. Mm. and already took hey. a man's job mm. and said, I'll give you the same amount of time that I gave the guy mm. that I just hey. took out of the mm. and Dak is saying, a little that, while ago. And, and Dak's mind... I keep my rep and, and, and Jason, in Dak's mind, he's saying, listen, 
The Dallas Cowboys had a franchise quarterback before I got here, too. And I replaced someone as well. I took someone's job as well. Hey, he got hurt. Hey, y'all remember when they showed Chauncey the tape? He said, we talk to you about no tour. <laughs> Give me that tour. <laughs> I'm about to snitch on it. I'm going to turn this tape right on in. I show a tape or two at Alabama. You better, get rid, of, no you better <laughs> get rid of Kane. There you go. Get All rid right. of him. TJ Husponzada and Marcel Reese are back. And beefing. Time for the most fearless discussion of the day. Let's move to Antonio Brown, Cheers. who should have plenty of suitors this offseason. But it sounds like his old team, the Steelers, won't be one of them, with general manager Kevin Colbert saying the team has moved on from the troubled receiver. Meanwhile, Raiders general manager Mike Mayock says he thinks Brown's time with the Raiders is over, but he also said A.B. left a void at wide receiver when he left. But a couple of days ago... A.B. tweeted a photo of himself in a Raiders hat, writing, quote, yes, I'm sleepy, six walk-throughs in seven days, two cities, whole lot of money in rotation. I wore my Raiders hat just in case of second chances. All right, Mike Mayock, to be precise, said, I think <laughs> A.B. is done here. He didn't say A.B. is done here. He said, I think A.B.'s done here. Yeah. Are the Raiders... <clears throat> Did they leave the door cracked for A.B.'s return? No, they didn't leave it cracked at all. Um, <clears throat> the whole think, and there's a conversation I have with a lot of my friends privately. I like to keep it 100 so you can never catch me out. My friends like to keep it 90 to give themselves wiggle room in case you do <laughs> catch them. This is my, uh, this is Mayock kind of trying to keep it 90, but realistically, he doesn't want A.B. back on this roster. They have, what, two firsts, three and a third, free agency. They have to whiff on all the receivers before they even look at Antonio Brown as an option. <clears throat> because it's not just what you can do in terms of production, it's how you are in our environment. And I don't think that they trust A.B. right now in terms of him personally coming back. He said he's on six walkthroughs. Y'all know what walkthroughs are, right? <laughs> I mean, it, it's going to the club, getting paid to show up. And, you know, I don't think that that exudes professionalism when you're saying, I'm trying to come back and I'm contrite about everything I did, and I'm also on this, like, rapper tour right now. I don't think the two mesh. I'm going to say this. Listen, everyone knows football-wise, A.B. is one of the best receivers we had the last decade. He can play. He can flat-out play. But his personality does not fit on a team right now. It's just not it, – especially not this Raiders team. It just doesn't fit. What I will say is I think the door could have been cracked if A.B. would change. But that tweet right there shows you – Nothing has changed. He's still talking about money, worried about himself. And Mike Mayock, what he's doing is here, listen, I'm not completely burning any bridges because as a GM, I still have to win. Yeah. I have to win right now. And we need help at that position because there has been a void. So I believe that the door is cracked as a football player, but he, in the back of his mind, he's saying, there, this guy's not changing. There's no way. The door is, is, is open. It's not cracked. It's open. And he says, I think his time up is there because Mike Mayock doesn't want him there. But if Gruden does, then I think <laughs> his time is up. If Gruden wants him, then I really don't have any choice. And if we want uh, one Tom Brady, I really don't have Boom. a choice. And so that's what's going to happen. If Tom Brady goes to the Raiders, A.B. is coming with him. And so that's I think his time is up, John. Please, you know I don't want him, but I really don't have <laughs> any sense. John Gruden, as a football coach, never wanted to get rid of A.B. in the first exactly. place. Exactly. So it's not just about Gruden. If Tom Brady goes to the Las Vegas Raiders, Antonio Brown will be wearing 84 right there with him. I, I think Ooh. that is my point as well, and that's why I think he's on this. I think because what he's saying is, is if we have to have A.B. to get Tom Brady, we'll take. He knows it, though. What? And I that's wore what my I, Raiders hat just in case for second chance. He knows what's going on, man. Behind the scenes, he yeah. He knows. And, and free agency plays out well behind the scenes before it does in front of playing You're field. absolutely correct with that, Marcellus. Yeah. But I would, I would urge A.B. to this. Shut up. Why? You don't shut up when behind the scenes you're being enticed and being well, told Well, you better change how you're talking then. I, I mean, know. Listen, because for us, you must admit, the football season, A.B., and what he was saying in the offseason, A.B., He's toned it down. He's actually been somewhat apologetic. He's he, toned he, it down he, more, though. He's changed exactly. more. That's my only point, Jay. Definitely he needs more. to tone it down Definitely a lot more. more. Because, listen, we're not talking about a team that he doesn't have history with, that he hasn't burned any bridges with. We're talking about a guy that was supremely disrespectful to a lot of people in that organization. Including Mike Mayock. We know what he Especially called Mike Mayock. Especially Mike Mayock. But you know what? Without consequence, there's permission. 
take yourself behind the scenes, as we've all been there before when your agent's telling you something. If your agent's saying, hey, Brady looking like he might go there and you can go with him, guess what? You're not going to be as contrite in the public's view because you have not felt the consequence. Right. Someone right now probably is persuading him to think that there's an opportunity in Well, stuff. I think there's going to be a probable false belief mm -hmm. that Tom Brady can control him. And Tom Brady may be selling that, that he, oh, I got this relationship with A.B. and with me. And Tom Brady will probably be proven wrong because I don't think Tom Brady over a long period of time can control Antonio Brown and no matter what their little private conversations are. But I do believe when Brady go, if Brady leaves the Patriots, again, it's Super Bowl or bust for him. And it's, I got to have a monster year. People are doubting me. People are saying I'm falling off a cliff. So he may really, really want to play with A.B. And they, the Raiders may know that they need to have A.B. in order to attract uh, Tom Brady. But, but the other thing that I think will lure John Gruden in this situation is, and, and again, y'all know how I love to make uh, inappropriate analogies. I love but it. It's just, <laughs> I love it. Let's go. You got to give us that. That's the only way I can live now, vicariously through these analogies. <laughs> Look, and it's like, the one that gets away. Mm -hmm. You didn't close the deal, mm. and you find out that, you know, she wasn't right anyway, yeah. but it's always in the back of your mind. You know, I'd like to, I'd like to touch that if I get another <laughs> chance. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just like... <laughs> just couldn't clean it up no better than that. <laughs> I feel like want to hang out again. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Touch that again. <laughs> and so you take that chance. Yeah. And everybody knows you shouldn't. You're you should opinion. not. You know, that ain't right for you, blah, blah, blah. But it's just, you just, you didn't get to experience it. <laughs> you thought it was going to be great. You thought it was going to make you a playoff team. And, and so it's still in the back oh, of your yeah. mind that got away. And if I get another shot, I, I, I might take it. They did touch A.B. and what he gave them. They, <laughs> they, they like, oh, oh well, we got to go. We got to clean that up, man. <laughs> <laughs> they did touch A.B. He has a grievance against the, against the Raiders. That also right. can play a part of it. It's where you drop this grievance. If We all going to find out here in the next few weeks. It's not going to be long. And Brady, if... Mm. They know, though. It comes with conditions. Yeah. You want Brady, then you're going to bring his baggage with him. It, it comes with conditions. It's a buddy it scholarship. It oh, when we used to always have oh, it. My yeah. boy got to come with yeah, me, too, yeah. or I'm not going to it, your school. It comes with conditions. But they, A.B. went full A.B., and you never should go full A.B. And he went full A.B. as a Raider. Guess what? It's hard to walk back those memories. I don't care what contingencies are in place. You're like... We have 51 other guys to think about outside of A.B. potentially and Tom Brady. I'm really going to sacrifice all those guys to have to deal with A.B., who right now still feels like he's a little full. A hot mess. Let, let, let's, this wasn't scripted, but I want to ask the question. Do we think A.B. is capable, even with Tom Brady, of behaving for a full year? For a full year? I haven't seen it yet. He hasn't proven it to me. Like I said, he's still tweeting about money and walkthroughs and this, that, and the other. Listen, I don't if I, if I'm talking to AB, I'm telling him this. I don't want to see any shirtless workout videos. I know you can work out. I know you can ball. <laughs> I want to see the personality. I want to see that you're willing to die to yourself, put the team and the shield above you. Mm. And now let's see where we can go from there. Yeah, I don't think he can behave, but I know he's gonna ball. And that's like, that's the problem. Like. Respect to a Wes Welker, who was tremendous, and Julian Edelman, who was damn good. Mm -hmm. But A.B., with Tom Brady, I don't care what the ages are right now. That's the, what's getting Tom Brady right now, that imagination of. No doubt. He's not the one that got away. He's the one that I had, and I now know how to handle. Listen, Tom can fantasize about A.B. right now because he had no one over the past 365 days to even help him be explosive on the offensive end. Who says that has to be A.B.? Hasn't had a Pro Bowl receiver since Randy Moss and Wes Welker. Like, I'm going to say, yeah. say yes. And You think the, he can behave? Yeah, the, the, if he has the amount of respect for Brady that Brady seems to show that he has for him, then of course you can. And you, you look at it, I, I look at... You can't be that dumb, man. Like, this is oh, your yeah, you last can't. chance. Oh, yeah. You, we know a lot of people can be dumb. Come on, TJ. Put, no, 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 no. Oh, yeah. Wait, you but can't be listen, how dumb. He put out, a, he put out a, a post. I never realized how good I had it with Ben Roethlisberger. So he's starting to see, like, ah, maybe I did. Ah, oh, I didn't realize he was this good. Now, the amount of respect you have for Tom Brady, for me, should be, especially if, you, if you're getting the ball. 
you TJ, was see if he, think if, of the people that have a lot of respect for you, even love you, but can't behave. Nah, it's never to this extreme. And I, listen, if they, you're talking about had, respect, there should there should be this no. Is a th they've had this conversation. They no have strings to respect. Brady if and A. B. have had respect. this conversation, mm. and he's assured him, Tom, I got you. And all, if and that's why Tom is willing to put his name on the line. For A.B., hey, wherever I go, but I want A.B. to come. You know this for real. You can't have greater respect for somebody than if you don't have tremendous self-respect. If A.B. Hey, hey, but hey, listen, hey, if A. B. is getting know. the ball, if A.B. is getting if, the hold ball. Hold on, deal with that. If, if Self-respect. <laughs> no, no, first. <laughs> I can't be loving you more than I'm loving me. If A.B. is getting the ball, he's going to be fine. No. If he's getting the ball, he's to going to be fine. To what tune? He got the ball when, in last year in Pittsburgh, but it's just the fact that Oh, Juju was getting the ball as much, and he had a problem with that. So and what if Tom Brady shares the ball? And there are six was, days in between was, him getting the ball. How do you get him to Sunday? Mm, oh. Y'all act, acting like he was just out here he doing all that. What? Man. Well, when he wasn't Come on, playing. Hoosh. Come on, man. Y'all, y'all. And where are they playing? Where, where are the Raiders moving to? I, don't Las go there Vegas. now. Oh, okay. <laughs> he going to behave in Las Vegas? What, what has he done off the field? What is he Come doing? on now. What has he done? A lot of accusations. No, 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 no. I'm not going to accusation. Off the that field police video was the only one while I While he was playing. What did he get in trouble oh, with off the playing? field while he was playing? Nothing. I'm not necessarily just Nothing. talking about trouble. I'm yeah. talking about I'm not talking about trouble. You're not looking for just numbers. When, you go, when you're the Raiders moving to Las Vegas trying to tap that, that untapped market, you just you're said, trying to win. You just said it yourself. You are trying to win. And they're looking trying, for guys that's going. But you're not just trying to give somebody why, why numbers. Why are you considering Tom Brady and if you're not just looking for numbers? Because he's the GOAT. Right. All right, well, and we he's going to produce Sin numbers. City. Rick Buecher and Chris Haynes are back. Let's return to the NBA where the Bucks and the Lakers have the two best records in the NBA, with Giannis on pace for another MVP award, while LeBron is probably the only person in shouting distance of the Greek freak. Not surprisingly, Fox Bet has Milwaukee and L.A. as the top two favorites to win the title this year. All right, best bet to win the titles, Milwaukee or Los Angeles? I'll say the Lakers. Um, the duo is too strong. I bet on their defense, their length, um, how they could play playoff basketball, slow it down. Sideline, I like their coaching staff in terms of depth and experience. Championship experience, even on the Lakers, sprinkled in there with Rondo, obviously LeBron. Uh, the Bucs still have to get over that hump, and I'm not going to bet on them getting over the hump. I know the pathway of the Clippers being there is going to be difficult for the Lakers. Uh, in all seriousness, the Lakers... I was look, wondering if you, you know, get through without yeah. saying... I, know, <laughs> I know, mentioned look, the Clippers. Look, I thought, he mispronounced the question. I thought he said Celtics <laughs> Clippers, but, you know, we're going to talk about the Lakers Bucks. Um... <laughs> It, it, the Lakers got to get past the Clippers. We all get that. But uh, I bet on that championship experience and the duo more so than I do with Milwaukee. You have surprised me. Uh, for me, it's it's the Bucks have the better chance of winning it simply because of the conference they're in. Yeah. And I look at Philadelphia now, questions about Ben Simmons. Thought that maybe that size and those matchups could create problems for them. I'm still a big believer in Toronto. But I need to see them in the postseason without Kawhi Leonard. I have yeah. as many questions about them in the postseason as I do about the Bucs. But, look, it's not Boston, popular. Boston, Boston no, no, nothing. <sighs> Jason Tatum is making me a little bit more of a believer. I question, do they have enough rim protection when it gets to a size game and it slows down a little bit? Are they going to be able to battle? It's, it, a lot of it's going to come down to matchups, which is why – I cannot have the Lakers as my top one because when it comes to matchups, if they have to go through the Clippers, I still don't see them getting that done. Yeah. I, I know it's not a popular notion right now because of the way the Lakers are playing and the way, conversely, the Clippers are playing. But when I look at what they have and what they're able to do and the focus of Kawhi Leonard, he proved it to me last year. Don't worry about the regular season. Don't judge me by the regular season. Don't judge my team by the regular season. Right. My aim is to be standing and be the last man standing in June. And, and Kawhi also said, and, and the Golden State's going to be decimated by injuries. <laughs> <laughs> he said right, that. Right. I missed, right. I missed right. that quote. I missed. Right. <laughs> who, who got that quote from? All right. Exactly. I, I would have to look. If we're talking about just these two teams, exactly. it is very hard for me to bet against LeBron James because I'm going the experience factor. I was there, you know, covered that team. Uh, from beginning of season, preseason, all the way up to uh, taking down Golden State, coming back from a 3-1 deficit. Uh, I do believe in teams having to go over that hump. And I don't, necessarily, I, don't, I don't necessarily look at the Eastern Conference landscape and say, you know, 
well, they're going to have an easy path, so they'll be, you know, they'll be more refreshed and be better focused to win in the finals. I don't, I don't, I don't think the Eastern Conference is going to set them up for whoever they're going to face in the NBA Finals. I think the, I think the Lakers and the Clippers are just two teams head <clears> over <throat> heels over his other squad. So I, I can't, I can't bet against Bron. Look, I, I'm going to dismiss Toronto's title last year. Great, I have it, they have it, but I don't think it proved anything because I think. Uh, uh, when, when you, the first time you win a title, at some point during the regular season, I need to see a stretch of greatness. And, you know, that's my problem with the Clippers right now. I've been a Clippers going to win the title guy all year. Hmm. They've not shown me a stretch of greatness. I'm now a doubter, and I got to lean. The Lakers are going to come out of the West, and I think that if they come out of the West, they they would beat the Bucs. And so that would be the team. I'd bet on the Lakers and LeBron James more so than the Milwaukee Bucks. But these are two low probability responses, right? Bucks and Lakers. Like, let's be real. I'm going to do my job up here. But damn it, uh, the Lakers can't. That's, that's, that's not that low. That's not that low. Lakers beat the Clippers yet? Do, 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 do. Exactly. I'm not favoring them in a series. If you say, would I favor the Lakers over the Clippers versus Milwaukee? In the East, I would say, okay, Lakers, you're going to show me something more in the playoffs, and it's better suited for you guys, hopefully. But LeBron's been less than against the Clippers. Kawhi, who was the Giannis stopper, is now going to be the LeBron stopper, and that's going to make this situation for Mm. the Clippers. This is the tricky part of this question, is that if you're asking me who has the better chance of getting there, then I'm going to say the Bucs. Yeah, Yeah, that's that's why I responded that way. But if it's lakers Bucks then I'm taking the Lakers in that matchup for many yeah. of the reasons. No, 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 but the question isn't about Lakers, about Bucks in the finals. Who Best bet to win a title. Right. And again, if you think the Clippers are going to take the Lakers out, then you should probably say the Bucks. Which is why I did. You don't – and again, I don't think that – I've now moved on what – what is it, February 26th? Yeah. I'm, the Clippers are not going yeah, to be the Lakers. Yeah, you're basically saying, yeah, Lakers yeah. are that, – That they haven't shown me enough greatness – during this season for me to, to believe. Them? And you only played them twice, you beat them twice. Nah, I need Was a stretch. I need I need 10, 12 games put together where I'm like really impressed. So beat the a team. A series. Because a series, one-offs, beating them, you know, I beat them once here and then a month later I beat them. That's not the same as two weeks, seven games. LeBron But with J- the depth of the hold Clippers, on, that ends back, the back to Whitlock's point, he clarified. You did pick the Bucks. You said the Bucks, right? Yeah. For this did, question, did you no? But you read the instructions here. Yeah, I can see all. He this. said, <laughs> "Look, my heart's not in this question." <laughs> <laughs> I'm just over here get my job. He said, "It's my last think, day for if a you week think, or so." If you think the Clippers are gonna take the Lakers down, job, you should have picked the Bucks. And they neither one gonna see? win. We already know this. People this don't read. The not, they don't read. Got to read the fine print. Uncle Jimmy's here to help us talk about our approval rating for Cam Newton. You, yeah, you. Oh. Uh, but first, who's your big dummy of the day? Yeah. You. <laughs> Give it to me. Wait a minute. W- w- what did nice. you say? Fits. I'm going to make an inappropriate analogy. Yeah. Since when in the hell you ever made an appropriate analogy? <laughs> yeah. Why he's qualified? Yeah. All right. Good point. All right, let's talk some Cam Newton who just yeah. took to Instagram to proclaim well, he just wants a little commitment, presumably from the Panthers, who have been noncommittal on Cam's future with the team. Marcellus, do you think Cam would be a better would be better off with a change of scenery. No, I don't think so. Um, he has so much equity there. They still have high hopes for him if he could stay healthy. And I've had that change of scenery. It feels great at first until you make your first mistake. Then you realize those people are not rooting for you the same as at the place that you help build. So stay in Carolina and keep it going. All right. Uh, I think a change of scenery to the Los Angeles Chargers Ooh. would be great for you Cam. You Chargers, mm. don't yeah. uh, oh, That grass is greener, baby. <laughs> that but grass is greener. Well, I think he's got a short leash in Carolina. But, Uncle Jimmy, mm. uh, I compared Cam to uh, Notorious B.I.G. Oh. Uh, earlier in the show. Your thoughts? I think you're getting lazy. What? I think you're getting lazy. How come? Because nobody's questioning whether or not you are notoriously B.I.G. <laughs> <laughs> we know your story. You used to bust tables with Mickey D's. <laughs> now you walk in Wally's and they holler, may we help you, please. <laughs> <laughs> hey, now hold up, hold up. Now let's not forget your partner, oh. see? Tall, dark, l- tall, dark, and bald as ever. <laughs> A Columbia graduate that talks real clever. <laughs> huh? Of course you gonna say Cam is Biggie. Yeah. Huh? 
That's just the lazy in your gravy, you understand? <laughs> it ain't no creativity. Oh. From what I saw yeah. at Cam in his Instagram. Yeah. He looked real Tupac-ish, if you ask me. Mm. <laughs> Two pockets, I don't know. See, man. see, cause look at look at the Instagram. All the Instagram said to me was, all eyes on me. <laughs> huh? Ain't no denying Cam's a real rider. You don't wanna mess with him. <laughs> huh? Ah, <laughs> oh, y'all guys talking about Cam and his image. Yeah. Talking about how he ended last year. Mm. Hey man, Cam ain't caring nothing about what none of y'all say. Yeah. You know, Cam will tell you a minute, only God can judge me. <laughs> <laughs> Why is he doing that dance? <laughs> Hey man, I'm dance. Hey man, listen to this. You said it yourself. What'd you say? Chargers looking for a quarterback. Yeah. We are. <clears throat> and look at Cam would fit right in there. Wow. If he did, what would it be? California love. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yeah. but hold on. And if it all work out, that boy be throwing Hail Mary <laughs> to Antonio Brown. <laughs> you, you, you think Cam give a damn that 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 Antonio that Brenda got a baby by Antonio Brown? <laughs> As long as they can team up, they be two of America's most wanted. <laughs> I think it would be stop. poetic justice. Oh, yeah. man, stop. If Cam could get the hell out of Carolina. <laughs> but let's be honest, he might have to fake his own death to get away from that owner. <laughs> that dude scared me, bro. Hey, man, that dude rolled into Carolina harder than Suge Knight with a new Beamer. <laughs> Soon as he got there, what'd he do? Hung Ron Rivera off the balcony until he quit. <laughs> Watch, pretty soon you're going to start hearing about Camavelli sightings. <laughs> he was in New England. Camavelli. He's over in Vegas. You know, all of these are new NAMI sightings. <laughs> you know, if you ain't careful, let me tell you something. You'll see Cam playing in Miami. As a, as a hologram. <laughs> Holly, if you hear me. That's some of your best work, man. That was that's fun. some of your best work. You need to work on your dance steps. Man, stop bad. doing that. Move. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I got that's Cam's. Video move. You know they do. <laughs> I got Cam's approval rating hey. up to a 55. Uh, he had been a 41. I got him 12 died. job performance. He's working out. Yeah. Uh, moved him up a couple points in authenticity. I think as well, yeah. 55 role player. Man, Uncle Jimmy had me going until he yeah. said, Cam with the Chargers throwing Hail Marys. That means we losing a lot. <laughs> Hail Marys ain't good, but uh, other than that, I'm with you. Cam Newton, all-star, 79. He still has it, man. Just got to stay healthy. I'm bro. trying to think of what, uh, well, you did use all eyes on me. He used so everything. You got everything, everything in there. Ever. All right.